So, SpongeBob is yours. Do you want to do the intro, or do you want me to do it? Uh, yeah. Okay, I can do the I can do the intro. I think. Uh, I'm going to ask you, are you ready, listeners? Aye, aye, pardon. Or, I can't hear you. Aye, aye, pardon. Okay, well, grab your spatula and jellyfish net, because today we're watching SpongeBob SquarePants. And welcome. This is Podden Together, the podcast where we are a book club for movies and TV shows. I'm Dustin. And I'm Indoni. And today, like I said, we're going to watch uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. So, yeah, this was my choice, but um, if you had to summarize like what SpongeBob was, like just on the IMDb thing, what would you say the show is uh, about? Um, hmm. An undersea fry cook. An undersea fry cook undergoes mundane adventures. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not bad. Or it's just in the theme song. They're just like, well, it's a SpongeBob. It's a sponge who lives under the sea. That's yeah, it. and he gets into nautical nonsense. Is it your favorite theme song? Do you think? To um, cartoon. Yeah, because I kind of remember. It's definitely very catchy, and I kind of remember when it first started. I was like, what the heck is this? This is super weird. And then it just like, I think it's kind of both a cult following and just like really mainstream because it's super memeable and very quotable. So, and like, since it's so old, like, people who are in their 30s now, like, still remember and quote it. And I feel like kids probably can still, too. So, and Tony, that's, that's me this Saturday. I'm turning 30. I'm that guy. I'm the 30 year old wanting to watch SpongeBob. That's fine, because I'm going to be 30 in September. And I'd <laughs> yeah, probably exactly. still watch SpongeBob. <laughs> What's funny is I missed out on it when it was like super big, I think, or like when it first started, I guess, because I didn't actually have cable or anything until I was like a, in high school or something so I was a sophomore when I first found out about Spongebob and I didn't want to admit that I watched it at first I remember but I was like this is a great show it really is but you know what just like just wait a couple of years and then when you're in college everyone's like oh yeah Pokemon and Spongebob are great exactly you realize it was cool to be into that stuff yeah. <laughs> at the time you're just like oh I don't know <laughs> well I wasn't super cool in high school so it didn't really matter to me <laughs> to admit that <laughs> exactly. I like Spongebob Oh, and they just announced that he's uh, possibly gay? I don't know. Nick Nickelodeon like tweeted a bunch of like gay characters and he was one of them and everyone was like, I fucking knew it. That's right. I saw yeah, that's right. It's like you kinda wondered, you know, but I don't know why. Like you're just like that's great. I hope that, yeah, I hope that's like an official thing though that they did. That's awesome. I just kinda figured because he's a sponge that he was asexual. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. But that's just the scientist in me. <laughs> what are what are starfish like what's patrick are they oh i don't i think they probably have sex i don't know i don't, I don't I, yeah do they we're gonna find out how do starfish reproduce <laughs> i was gonna say that's worth a google search it is real quick some of them reproduce by releasing their eggs directly into seawater so that means that they can re reproduce sexually but i know that they can also Oh, there is asexual reproduction. This is, we're wow. getting too deep into it. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a different episode. That's yeah. just <laughs> podding this together, starfish episode. Science corner with, start with podding <laughs> this together. Yeah, mini-sode. Oh, I love science corners. Like Science Friday on NPR. Oh, yeah, I need to check that out. It's very good. It's, def it's a podcast, too. My brother would be disappointed in me because he's a chemistry professor, so he probably knows the answer. And I, I don't oh, know. shit. Um, so we open up, you know, in Bikini Bottom, just like they always do, and they're at the Krusty Krab, uh, and SpongeBob and Patrick are just kind of like playing a game. There's nobody in the Krusty Krab. Yeah, and of course, Mr. Krabs is like losing his mind because it just means money lost. <laughs> right. He's always about that bottom line. Like, how much do you think SpongeBob gets paid? A fry cook in a fast food restaurant, but he also <laughs> owns his own property, so... Yeah. How much are pineapples going for in that area? Five dollars an hour? That's true. A pineapple is probably like eight bucks. Yeah. Just a, a month, eight bucks a month. They're like, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe real estate in Bikini Bottom just like dirt cheap. 
Well, Patrick is definitely the worst off because he lives under a rock. That is true. And also SpongeBob's house is enormous. There's a bedroom, a kitchen, a living room. I remember he's got like a library slash study in one episode. He's got yeah. like a rooftop deck. Yeah, there's always like a ladder inside his house to get to things, which doesn't make sense. You're like, how big is it? It's huge. Is he, but he only has like one piece of furniture, right? Like, doesn't he only have that one weird chair? And yeah, the, the one, one like, armchair that's made out of like a uh, a life floaty. The iconic meme, like, eh, I'm ahead out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw one today. I don't remember what the meme was, but I was like, oh, this one's, it's a really good meme. It's got high property value. All SpongeBob memes yeah. are great. But uh, yeah, Krabs is always about that bottom line. And he was like telling them to get back to work. But he's like interested in the game kind of too. That He's like, what are you doing? Right, because they're talking about like treasure. So anything that has to do with money or gold or That's something, right. he's like all about it. That's what caught his eye, right? Was yeah. that the like, oh, we're, do- we're playing this game called Dutchman's Treasure. Because he's kind of a pirate personality. Like he talks like a pirate. He's always saying like R and shiver me timbers and stuff. Yeah, which is weird. Like, I don't know why he would be like the pirate voice on the show, but I guess they just wanted somebody that was constant like a constant character that maybe did that i guess so i mean i guess it kind of makes sense that he's like greedy because pirates were always after treasure (laughs) in stories although i wouldn't want to go to a restaurant owned by a crab or that possibly has crabs using the name (laughs) crusty is a bold move because you know that is very not appealing to me (laughs) a spoiler alert there might be something about that name in two true oh exciting uh, but yeah, so uh, Mr. Krabs, he does finally join the game because, of course, he's like, oh, treasure. Like, he loves treasure. Um, I want to I play this game. And it's really just like a simple, like, it's your basic, like, I don't know, Monopoly or any, like, it's legit a board game. But he thinks it's, like, real. Like, even when he's playing it the first time, he's just, like, obsessed with winning the game to get to oh, the yeah. treasure. He cracks really quickly. Because he wins the first time. And then he's just like, well, I want to keep on playing. And then they're just, like, playing all day and all night and then he like spongebob finally gets to leave and then mr krabs is in his house he's like come on let's keep playing my boy he just like that was the best can't get enough. <laughs> that was so creep that was so creepy though when he's, he's like okay they leave the crusty crab or whatever then spongebob is like opens his door and he's already in his house i'd be like get the f out of my head like what is this yeah there's some good like horror themes in spongebob like Mr. Crab just getting into his house or the episode with the hash slinging slasher. Mm, yes, that is a good one. We totally forgot to mention, though, that uh, that character who Mr. Krabs, he finally does get somebody does come into the store, actually, or the restaurant. Oh, and he yeah. throws him out easily. He's like, no, 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 we're playing this game. Yeah. And of course, it's the iconic, my leg guy. <laughs> yeah. Who's yeah, in... so that guy, no matter what happens, he gets hurt. And, like, yeah. He always says, my leg. I mean, at this, like... You know, his medical bills must be off the charts if he's always breaking his leg. <laughs> Do you think he's claiming that every time just to be like potentially to sue people? Just he's like, if anybody heard it, I can do it. I can say it. I can sue him right now. True. Maybe he's like rich from like insurance claims. How many pineapples does he own? That's what I want to know. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Three. And right by Jellyfish Fields, probably. Because Ooh, that's probably that's the park that... Probably a beautiful view. I was just thinking, like, what would be a ridiculous number of pineapples to actually have in my house? And three is a lot, because I almost never even managed to eat one before it goes bad. I know, but they're so good. Yeah. Ooh, there's pineapple in the fridge right now. Do you think SpongeBob (laughs) is in there? (laughs) Yeah, probably not. But, um, yeah, so so he goes, Krabs goes to his house, and SpongeBob, yeah, yells at him to be like, seriously, dude, I, I have to go to bed, like... Um, and I thought this, I don't know if you caught this, like, I've obviously seen it many times, but why does he sleep on three mattresses? What? Huh. Yeah. SpongeBob has three mattresses on one bed. I do remember his bed is super tall and it's got a diving board <laughs> attached to it, right? Uh, yes, it does. And then, yeah, his alarm is like the classic, like the foghorn or whatever. Like, ooh. Yeah. The, the why does he horn. sleep on three mattresses? <laughs> That's and really does a weird. sponge does a sponge even need a mattress? Probably not. <laughs> He's soft already. Yeah. Wow. Three mattresses. He really must be making good money as a fry cook. <laughs> That's, yeah. A huge house, three you. mattresses. Well, as far as I know, they are one of only two restaurants in Bikini Bottom, and the other one is the Chum Bucket, which nobody. Mm-mm. 
There's that fancy one that they go to sometimes. It's like a sunken ship, or maybe it's yeah. Oh, is that like when like Squidward goes with Squilliam or whatever? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy. We clearly have too much knowledge about SpongeBob. <laughs> I know. So we didn't even need to watch the episode. I don't think. Probably um, not. Um, but um, Mr. Krabs shows up the next day after like SpongeBob yells at him, and you can kind of tell that he's like cracked a little bit. He's like, "Yes, of course, it's just a game. It's fine. Not real treasure." And then the next day he shows up with a ship, and he's like, "We're gonna go hunting for real treasure." And <laughs> right. SpongeBob and Patrick are like, in a, they're immediately like, "Hell yeah, let's do it!" Right, because they never say no to anything. I don't think they're just like, "Oh, sure." <laughs> Mr. Krabs, and then he's the captain, of course, Mr. Krabs is. Obviously, because he's the most piratey, and because he's got the map. Well, so that's kind of funny. So he has this map, um, because SpongeBob is like, oh, where are we going? He's like, don't worry, I have this map. You just got to, like, listen to me and follow me. SpongeBob, without even, he's like, cool, can I see it? And Mr. Krabs is like, no, only the captain looks at the map. And he's just like, oh, okay, sure. (laughs) And, like, doesn't even ask again. He's just like... Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. But he's like, oh, you have to say R, and eventually, like, clearly SpongeBob and Patrick don't understand, like, how to end sentences with R. You know, like, when you're supposed to say, like, on a walkie-talkie, like, over. Yeah. And that means that means you're done talking. Like, you're supposed to say R at the end of it, but they would say it at the end of, like, every word. Yeah, I, R, think, R, we're, R, about, R, to, R, and then they just crash into a rock but i love the joke after this like what's the status of the ship and spongebob was like the whole thing's underwater <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> like the I humor is really good in this show there's yeah there's multiple episodes i remember like where they make fun of like like oh i don't want to get in there like i'll get all wet or something it's like uh yeah like you're already in the ocean like you're yeah <laughs> you're already wet like there's those kind of jokes where you're just like God, you almost hate it you're just like that's funny, but I hate that I'm laughing because it's so stupid. I think that that's why it makes it like still good for adults to watch. It's because like that's a pretty funny joke that the kid wouldn't necessarily get. Right. So the kind of like the poke fun at yourself. So maybe it keeps the adults interested a little bit. Yeah. Um, so they start to continue on foot because the ship is wrecked. And uh, so they're going <laughs> 10,000 paces we have to, we have east. To on, we, have, we have to continue on foot. Yeah. yeah. So they still have to go 10,000 paces east and then they finally finish the 10,000 paces and <laughs> it's the famous line, this is the wrong way, which way did you tell us to go? And Patrick's like, oh, east, I thought you said weast. <laughs> I'm glad you wrote that down in the notes because I was taking little notes yesterday when I wrote it and I was like, that has to be said. It has yeah. to be like, oh, I thought you said weast, <laughs> like in classic Patrick. That's a pretty good Patrick impression. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I could do Patrick not too bad and then like a <laughs> like a oh. Squidward laugh. That's Yo, it. Squidward wasn't in either of the episodes. I know. That was a kind of a bummer. I didn't even think of that. What the heck? Oh well. Or yeah, or say Sandy wasn't either. I wonder if she was even established yet at this point. She was because the next episode is actually the one we thought about doing, which is Texas or whatever. Oh, big old stupid Texas. Big old stupid Texas. <laughs> yeah, that is that is kind of yeah. There, there's so many good ones that you know, like we didn't get Mrs. Puff or whatever at school or anything like that. His driving record, which is always a classic trope in SpongeBob, that he can't drive a boat. Yeah, does he just walk to work? <laughs> yeah, he walks everywhere because he can't get his license, his boating license. Yeah, his old. <laughs> so they're walking. They gotta like go back the other direction, which I guess is like twenty thousand paces in the other direction. And they're like, <laughs> Mr. Krabs, we're tired. We want to go home. And so he like guilt trips them and manipulates them into staying and they're like well don't worry we're gonna stay we'll be super loyal the most loyal ever and like later in the night they're sli- they're trying oh. to sleep and they're like oh i'm so loyal i don't want to stop so let's go see if mr Krabs wants to keep on going and he's like <laughs> yes. not in his tent and the map is there and in classic like children's style they're like well i'm just i'm just touching it no rule <laughs> yeah. against that i'm not looking at it <laughs> Yeah, he's like, don't touch it. I'm not looking at it. I'm touching it. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it rolls open and they look at it and it's like, oh, shit, it's our game board taped to a piece of paper. Right, which is funny because they're so up for doing whatever, but then they they do realize that, like, even a point for, like, SpongeBob, who's childlike and imaginative, he is even like, oh, God, like, this guy thinks this is real life he's crazy like we've been following a crazy like he has it in his eyes you can tell he's just like yeah oh my gosh mr krebs is nuts yeah he's gone off of his rocker 
Um, Because then he like corners them in the tent. He's like, I thought ye was loyal. (laughs) It's like, is he going to murder these guys? (laughs) Yeah, that, that loyal competition didn't last very long. No. And then they stumble upon the X. That would be a horrible way to mark mark treasure is like a big X painted on the ground. So that I need to look up that too because why is that a thing? I mean, I guess in real life it's not an actual X on the ground; it's just on the map. <laughs> maybe that maybe that's what I'm thinking. But I was yeah. like, if there's an X on the ground, yeah, you would definitely be like, what's going on there? Like, I'm gonna somebody would have messed with it by then. Yeah, I'm gonna dig this up right now. So they dig, they find the treasure. And Mr. Krabs is just greedy and he's trying to take the whole thing and they're fighting over it. And lo and behold, it's but doing Mr. none Fenn. of the work, by the way. Yeah, he does none, none of the work. work. Classic manager. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, classic at the restaurant, too. SpongeBob, do this while he goes, counts his money in his office. Yeah. I mean, that's capitalism for you. <laughs> there's nothing, you know, there's no social events showing that that's wrong right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that capitalism is problematic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's, yeah, he's being so greedy because they're like, and being loud, you know, about fighting over the treasure and everything. Yeah. Flying Dutchman, who's just, I love that he's just sleeping in his ghost ship hovering above, like, is he just like watching the X, like just seeing whoever digs it up or like, I don't know. Doing? Cause like, so he comes down and he's like, <laughs> oh, who dug up me treasure? And SpongeBob, <laughs> like, he, Krabs pushes it on them. He's like, they did it. So he's like, oh, thanks. You saved me a lot of digging. Did he know it was there? Can he just not dig it because he's a ghost? Maybe, like, but he can happening? physically hold. He can physically hold the treasure. So you think he could hold like a shovel? I do like that the Flying Dutchman becomes a recurring character in the show. Mm-hmm. He, like, he teaches character. SpongeBob how to tie his shoes and everything. Um, well, well, that's another time. Do you remember that classic episode where he SpongeBob is like on the Dutchman ship? And the Dutchman is asking him, like, he's, like, backing up his ship, you know, like you would in reverse. And you're like, oh, are, am I good? And he's like, you're good. You're good. You're good. But he's hitting, like, the coral. Yeah. Like, every the time. ship is just and wrecked. It's just, it's just, yeah, he's like, you're good. You're good. Um, yeah, Flying Dutchman's great. He is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking about the the, fly, the tying the shoe episode. He is like, I can't tie me shoes. I just wear a little sock on me ghostly tail. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. <laughs> Uh, he rewards SpongeBob and Patrick because they did all the digging and they saved he, they saved him all the effort. And so they get gold, and then Mr. Krabs is like, "Well, they're my crew. What do I get?" And he just gives them plastic treasure. Well, he gives them the commemorative plastic treasure that was also part of the original board game. Yeah, which I thought was like I love, I love like the SpongeBob has really good like funny voiceovers. You know where they it's like the voice that does like three hours later yeah. that one. But then but it was like the so when they got the coins, it was the classic like gold coin. Yeah, they were singing gold it. Gold blooms. <laughs> yeah, screws all the blooms. And then it was him. It was just like classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what he gets for being greedy and rude. <laughs> yeah, and that's basically the end of that little part of the episode because you're just like, yeah, don't be greedy, and you'll maybe get two gold doubloons out of something. Heck yeah. Would you call, I guess that's like the first vignette. I don't know if that's what you would call it. The first, is it like its own episode? I don't know. That's, I, that's what's weird about these. I think so technically, but then they're, they're just like short little like 15 minute episodes to make a 30 minute episode. Yeah. <laughs> so this is actually the reason that I picked this episode anyway, to begin with was this part was the second part rock bottom. Yeah. I think everybody knows rock bottom. Sorry, rock bottom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, he, with, yeah. Weird opening, weird opening to this one though, because it's like a theme park. But like, what kind of weird theme park is Glove World? I can't think of a single like real world reason <laughs> why that would be the thing. Like, it's not like there's tons of gloves in the ocean or something like that. Like, why is it Glove World? Well, so that was my thought though. Is like, are they making like almost like a weird like environmental joke about like? plastic and stuff being in the ocean but then you would think it would be like recycle world or like bottle world because like you think of bottled water and stuff like that not like gloves yeah i don't know but there has to be something like that to make it that's the joke i think it's just like going way over our heads yeah it's probably some seven-year-olds could tell us and be like oh it's because of this duh yeah uh so yeah they're at glove world and they get on the bus to go home SpongeBob got this like glove balloon that keeps on like racking the bus driver in the face because he's like, I don't have change. Let me look for change. Patrick, do you have change? How much is it? And then he just like 
sit down on the bus. I was going to say, that bus driver's a saint, though, because he lets him get slapped in the face about 10 times before he says anything yeah well the last time was the last straw because then eventually he kicks them off the bus but not before they realize that they're on the wrong one going to the wrong town Ooh, i have a plot hole from this though because they needed money to ride that bus right and he didn't have any money right oh, then he, and then Patrick, later... like, he buys candy at the candy store or the vending machine yeah that's a really good point huh <laughs> he was trying to get a free bus ride mm. Plastic well, he did it. That's clever. He did. Huh. Um, I didn't think about that. I, I just thought about that when you said it right now. So I didn't either. Great memory. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they eventually they the bus driver just like whatever, sit down. You know, I've been on buses where they're like that too, where like somebody doesn't have the right pass or something like that, and you're just the bus driver just like ah whatever, like just, just I'll, I'll drop you off. Yeah. And the, but they don't realize. All of a sudden, oh, it's Patrick again, who clearly he can't read a map and doesn't know west and east. He can't, but yeah. he's like, what does leaving Bikini Bottom mean? Yeah. Where is leaving Bikini Bottom? <laughs> yeah. Where is leaving Bikini Bottom? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, then they realize they're on the wrong bus and then it just so, like goes down this vertical cliff. And like when they get to the bottom, like, they hit the windshield, the glove hits the wind, the driver into the windshield, and he's just like, get off of this bus. Right, yeah, so they, yeah, he gets, they get kicked off the bus, and it's just like classic, you know, the, this is pretty accurate. This is like where, you know, your science nerd would help out too, because like, you know, they, there's like little cliffs in the sea part, you know, and it's now it's like these dark, weird looking creatures that like, that we don't know much about, even yeah. today, like when, like we don't go down exploring, because they've literally at the bottom of the ocean yeah the marianas trench exactly <laughs> and like what's funny is like it's dark and kind of creepy there but immediately patrick has to go to the bathroom or something and he's like well that's fine i mean i'm sure they have bathrooms down here it'll be easy to find it but then like it's just you can't tell because there's just question marks on both sides of the bathroom like yeah not designating men and women which maybe we should use that for society just question mark yeah i mean or just have unisex bathrooms it would make things so much easier <laughs> that would just be you're right yeah <laughs> maybe people people don't get upset about question marks that's a fair point <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah because like all they're like we'll just wait for someone to come out to see what they look like and then we'll be able to tell but it's all these deep sea creatures so they have no idea what anyone is <laughs> Right. But yeah, like some are glowing. Some just have like those really weird teeth, like sharp teeth, like anglers, you know? And yeah. Stuff like that. Some people are just slithering along. Yeah. There's like a creepy eel kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Is I think good? that's why I love this episode, though, because it was like kind of clever on like weird sea creatures that they had drawn. It was very like scientifically smart of them because it's like they're definitely deeper in the ocean. So the, the creatures are going to be weirder down there. Mm -hmm. So SpongeBob is going to go get a bus schedule. And he's like, Patrick, let me know if a bus shows up. And like two seconds later, Patrick is on the bus hanging out the window. He's like, the bus is here. And he just yeah. leaves him. I don't know about you, but I actually... I like actually laughed out loud yesterday when I watched that part. He's like, <laughs> it's here. And I'm just like, right. Getting on the wrong public transportation is one of my nightmares. And I've done it before, like on the subway in New York City. Oh, I've for sure. realized I was going in the wrong direction. But usually it only takes me like a stop or two. And then I can just get off and hop on in the right direction. But it still scares me every single time. Uh, well, here's my fun subway story in New York. I don't know if you know this even, but so I actually use a wheelchair to get around. Mm -hmm. And you, <laughs> subway stations in New York, it's only like every other one actually has like a an like elevator. An elevator. It's not even like, it's not even every other one. It's like pretty random. Like if you don't have like a thing that kind of knows. And when I went to visit, it was like, I didn't obviously know and not backtrack a ton. I was like, no, no, if we go, if we really go to the next spot that has like a handicap spot or an elevator to use like it's gonna we're gonna have to backtrack so many blocks in new york and not doing it i crawled up some gross gross subway oh, stairs no. and my friend carried the chair back up <laughs> like the steps it was just like i just bit the bullet i was like doing it i'm sure my hands are not clean to this day probably not i anytime i come home from the city i have to like scrub my hands and my face and then still shower like as soon as I can. I bet you're pretty jacked from getting up the stairs on your own though. <laughs> that is true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big arms, that's one of the benefits, but yeah. <laughs> 
uh, gross hands. That's probably why I'm not, you know, I'm probably not going to get Corona. I feel very good about it because I oh, would have had strong. any diseases <laughs> already. <laughs> super strong immune system. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I completely lost where we are. Oh, he's stranded oh, at rock bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So the bus schedule, he's trying to find that he like, yeah, he's alone now because, um, Patrick got on the bus without telling him real quick. Yeah. What a um, jerk. <laughs> well, to be fair, fair we find out why though he didn't have much time to give him a warning because that bus just comes and leaves within seconds and there's yeah. no there's no rhyme or reason of time it seems like for that bus to be there he really doesn't it kind of reminds me of the buses at my at my high school especially like the the uh, after school buses like if you weren't on that bus at 4 p.m miss bernice was leaving your ass behind <laughs> she just doesn't care she did <laughs> how do you get home <laughs> What, one time, well, there was like, there was a couple later buses. There was like a, like you had your assigned bus and there was like an after, like a clubs bus, which was at like three. And then there was an after sports bus, which is at like four. Right. But I remember one time I was getting on the bus and like these girls were walking real slow. She's like, y'all need to hurry up because I got a date later. And the, these girls were like, oh, Miss Bernice, because she was like a 65 year old woman. So we were all just like, heck yeah, get it. Well, now I just picture Miss Bernice driving the bus to rock bottom. Like he's not on the bus in two seconds. I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> yeah. She's the one driving him. I'm out. Oh, he's like waiting for the bus and misses multiple of them. Like the first one, he's tying his shoe. The bus pulls up, drives away. He's trying to like catch his balloon. Dr- bus pulls up, drives away. And then there's like some strange fish. He's like, hey, can you help me out? And the guy just runs after his balloon. <laughs> well, he runs after it after he goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all he says is. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> yeah. That it, it is. Probably a great way to end a conversation with someone that's just like, you don't want to talk to. You should try that. Like uh, next time I'm in a debate or an argument, I'm going to try that. Just <laughs> Yeah, and walk away. You have to walk yeah. away afterwards. Yeah, I'd be like, you're not listening to reason. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty effective. Right, yeah. So, and but then, so we realized though later, because now he's like, he's missed the bus about 15 times just due to random reasons. Like he's, you know, trying to tie a shoe, miss the bus. Uh, yeah, the balloon thing happens. Uh, he tries to go get candy from the vending machine. And every time, like, he actually... So first he misses it because he's putting the quarter in. The second time he goes back, he's the bar finally drops. Uh, but then like when he reaches for it, the bus leaves again. Or every time he touches the candy, the yeah. bus driver just like revs up or something like it's the gas pedal. I thought that was like pretty clever. Yeah, part. I like that too. I love that detail. So then he's just like, he's had it and he goes to the bus station and waits in line. And it's a super long line. <laughs> and he's there for, I guess, hours because even the clock is kind of weird. And there's like some numbers, some of them are upside down. There's some letters. Um, well, the best part of that was like, he was so fed up though, right? Like, I I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've been like this, like, you're so mad. You're like, I'm not going to take any more shit. The next thing I'm just going to like, nobody can tell me to do anything because I'm that pissed right now. But then he gets scared by all the big fish. He's like, I'm going to be first in line no matter what. And then he sees these huge fish. And yeah. so he just slowly gives up his point. Like there's so many, so many times where I'm just like, mad for a hot second where I'm like, I'm not going to give this up. And then immediately I'm just like, oh, this is, I don't, I'm not fighting about this anymore. I'm, I'm not up. dying on this hill. <laughs> I'm not brave <laughs> enough and I don't have the good social skills to maintain this anger. Exactly. So he ends up being like 300 and I wrote it down, I think 329th was his place in line. Yeah, that's a long ass line. Well, and then some kind of fish has a baby on him or something like has an egg on him and it has three more up an egg on him and that egg hatches into three more (laughs) Um, people didn't think bus stops were like disgusting enough (laughs) then you get puked on like an egg puked on that's true i have not had terrible bus experiences luckily Uh, i had one i got one random like person like spilt a liquid that i'm not sure what it was like like on my shoe it wasn't that big a deal Oh, okay. Shoes not that bad. Shoes wasn't bad. That's why I was just like, I didn't get mad or upset, but it was just like, I don't know what though. Like, it was a weird color. She seemed drunk. It was probably just alcohol, but it was just like, I don't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. Um. So he's at the station in line all night. He finally gets up to the window and he misses the last bus. Sorry, <clears throat> last bus <clears throat> for the night. <clears throat> yeah. And so he's like d- bound and determined to like, you know, pull an angry white lady and be like, I'm not leaving. I'm staying right here until you get me a bus to Bikini Bottom. 
And then they like, turn off the lights on him. He's like, oh, this is scary shit. This is advanced darkness. Advanced. I like that. Advanced darkness. <laughs> which it kind of is because he's in the bottom of the ocean and there's no light that gets down there. Ooh, which that was actually a cool thing that he picked up at Glove World, though. It didn't work, but he had that glove flashlight that he turned on for a second. He's like, it's not so bad. Yeah. But then it like petered out of course because it's like a two dollar gift that you bought at the gift store <laughs> yeah that makes sense for like a gift shop flashlight i had a bunch of those from the philadelphia zoo those things always broke the zoo why is the zoo the zoo's like the only place i've ever stopped and bought crappy stuff at a gift shop but it's just like it's like you have to because zoo stuff is cool <laughs> yeah you get i guess you just get in the mood you're just like i'm gonna buy a stuffed, stuffed elephant, elephant because i just saw i just saw one yeah uh but a fart noise starts chasing him, or I guess a raspberry. Yeah. In yeah. the dark, which is intimidating. Um, and so it, keep, like, yeah, it keeps getting louder and closer. It like, yeah. kind of like echoes. Yeah. I'm going to leave the bus station. I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to start <laughs> running. I'm, I'm sprinting. I'm sprinting. And then he like crashes into the wall that leads, that's like the cliff. Yeah, the, the 90 degree angle street. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> the sheer wall. And then it's the guy with his balloon. It's the weird guy that he's like, hey, can you help me earlier? And who ran off, who went and ran off for his balloon. It's that guy. And he like just doesn't talk to him. He just ties the balloon to his wrist and starts blowing it up. And he starts <laughs> yeah. floating. And he's like, oh, great. <laughs> Which I, I love SpongeBob though in here because he's just like, no, thank you. The balloon has enough air. <laughs> like, because he's like, he thinks the guy doesn't get what he's like. He's like, no, I'm trying to get home, bro. Like, I don't care about the balloon. Yeah. And then the guy shouts, like, he switched out, shouts, playing, and the guy's like, you're welcome. No raspberry. Yeah. So it's like, clearly, maybe he, do you think he just knows to speak his, like, dialect, or is he also not from Rock Bottom? That's what I was wondering. Well, he was like, not necessarily an angler fish, but he had like the the light, yeah. the bioluminescence. He seems like he's down there. Yeah. He was definitely less scary than the other fish. I didn't even think about that. He looked like a rock bottom, or he looked like a bikini bottom fish, but with just like a light thing. Right. <laughs> Maybe he works in bikini bottom and commutes every day down to rock bottom. Oh, yeah. Good call. What a commute, though. Ugh. Ugh. Well, it seems pretty quick because you just <laughs> drop down a sheer cliff face. <laughs> Yeah, we don't see the mileage on leaving Bikini Bottom and when you enter Rock rock Bottom. Yeah. It was a pretty quick real, like pretty quick time between realization, panic attack, and arriving. <laughs> yeah. But the balloon ride takes all night. He he gets to his house and it's morning. He probably has to go to work, like at the Krusty Krab. That's true. Also, uh, Gary has not been fed at all. No episodes of Gary either. Do you think maybe it's just dark down there because it's the bottom of the ocean? It's just always dark down there. Oh, we and we don't. You did say we don't know what time it was. Yeah. So it um, could have just been night. Yeah. Yeah. But he makes it home, and then Patrick is on a bus <laughs> on his way back to rescue him. <laughs> yeah. Mom, Mom, I'll go get you. <laughs> yeah. Why did it take him so long? Because he was on like the first <laughs> bus out of there, and there was like fifteen or twenty buses that left Rock Bottom. Well, clearly Patrick doesn't understand buses and signs. It probably took him a long time to figure out which bus goes back down to oh, Rock Bottom. I would be Patrick on a bus. Oh, me too. I'm not. I'm not any better than Patrick on a bus. Like the bus system, I have no idea. Couldn't tell you. Now I'm, now I'm gonna have to try. I'm gonna try once the mall reopens. I'll try and take the bus to the mall. <laughs> there you go. That way, it's like kind of safe and kind of you know where you're going. You have a destination picked out. Yeah. So Patrick is on his way. Gary has been unfed all night. And uh, unfed all night. SpongeBob is home. Yeah. And that's the, I don't know if there's a lesson in this one really, but there was in the first vignette, I thought, but I don't know about this one. Yeah. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe ask for help and trust people. Like that guy was trustworthy in Rock Bottom, even though he seemed scary at first. Maybe that's the. Yeah. I mean, he did also like run away immediately. So do you know? Time to talk to him. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned that you have some truths and goofs for us. I do. I do. Okay. You ready? I am ready. Okay. So two of these are true. One's a goof. Okay. Okay. SpongeBob's address is 124th Conk Street. Mm-hmm. 
Originally, SpongeBob was designed to wear a red baseball cap. Three, according to the concept art, the Krabby Patty was originally going to be called Barnacle Burger. Oh, damn. Um, first one is fake, maybe? That is true. He does live on 124th Con Street, and it was going to be called a Barnacle Burger. Oh. He was actually designed to wear a green baseball cap. Oh, God. That one just seems so ridiculous. I was like, there's no way that one's real. Well, and just, just a hat in general would be weird on him. Like, now that you see him most of the time, no hat. I mean, I guess he wears one at Christmas Crown. It's not a baseball cap, though. Yeah, wait, doesn't he wear a baseball cap, but it's just, like, it's teeny tiny, like uh, like Arnold style? Is it on there all the time? No, no, I just mean, like, he's worn a hat uh, in some episodes. Oh, he, he has worn a hat in some episodes, yeah. So it's just, but just, like, I can't imagine that, like, full, like, the whole time. Could you imagine if that was what he looked like every episode, like, with a hat? It'd be terrible. So, well, I since we're doing Nicktoons, I don't know if we do the, would you watch again, would you recommend it? But, I mean... I would definitely recommend watching Spongebob. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, like I said, I was a late bloomer to it. And I think if you haven't seen it, like it's no shame in watching those on Amazon Prime right now as a, an adult. They're happy and joyful. Yeah. And there's still, like you said it best, like there, there's still adult humor in there too, even though it's a kid's show. Totally. So yeah, I would. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, catch a bus on over to social media and find us on Twitter at Pod and Together, over on Facebook at facebook.com slash Pod and Together. Or uh, hit us up directly at podnistogether at gmail.com. And don't exactly. forget to rate and subscribe on iTunes and Google Play. Yeah, because if you've hit rock bottom, you want to listen to some of these episodes and we'll have you ready in your, we'll have you back in your bikini bottoms for the summer in no time. Oh, that was so good. Excellent. Okay, bye. Bye.